Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, truly an honor and privilege to be here. Um, so I, Bill and I talked a little bit about uh, what would be a good uh, topic from the standpoint of agriculture. And I just thought maybe I'd just sort of give you a little bit of an overview of, of agriculture <laughs> in Illinois and things that are going on. And, and then uh, just see if you have any uh, questions. And, um, but uh, as, as Bill said, we had a chance to know each other uh, and get to know each other through the Mount Zion Chamber of Commerce, and and uh, our we, we lost a, a good guy, but uh, it's your game that uh, Bill is here, so uh, it's uh, really good to see you again. I appreciate the invite here. Thank you. Uh, so, th in my position as Director of Agriculture, we have uh, we, I oversee an agency that has about 340 employees. We're headquartered in Springfield, and we're a regulatory. Uh, agency. We also are a marketing agency. We we regulate uh, certain uh, types of uh, foods, uh, seed, feed, fertilizer applications. We have a uh, and we also have we oversee the um, the quality of eggs in Illinois, for example. Uh, we make sure that uh, we have animal health and welfare programs. We have a an animal disease lab. So we're, we're pretty broad. And then, as I mentioned, we. We market products, and part of our charge, our statutory charge, is to uh, is to uh, promote Illinois agriculture and agricultural products and help uh, increase our exports. So, just a couple of factoids about agriculture: uh, about 75 percent of Illinois is farmland, and when you think about that, uh, that's that's pretty significant. Although about 95 percent of the population used to be engage in agriculture around the time of Abraham Lincoln. Now it's only about 2%, so you can kind of see how agriculture has become much more uh, productive and efficient. And, and there are about 74,000 uh, plus farms in Illinois uh, producing uh, a variety of, of uh, commodities. But our primary products are corn and soybeans. And this year is going to be, by all accounts, USDA, says it's going to be a record hard. Anybody here a farmer, by the way? Anybody here have a farm background? Well, I'd ask. Okay, usually somebody is and, or has some uh, relationship uh, to farming. But it's going to be a huge harvest, according to USDA. We're going to uh, exceed uh, every year we've ever had for corn and soybeans are, are the estimates. Last year, uh, we were the number one soybean state in the nation. Usually we're one or two in that regard. Usually Iowa, we're, we're not number one. Uh, Iowa is, uh, but this year we, we could be number one in both. It's, it's been that kind of a year, so it's really a, a good thing. Unfortunately for farmers, prices are, are down a little bit, so while well, the yields are up, the, the prices are down. But what we do with that uh, harvest is uh, something that's also a good news story in Illinois. And, and one of the reasons Governor Quinn um, appointed me is that I used to represent an area in Decatur, which is huge for food processing. You have ADM there, Tate and Lyle, plus they represent a lot of farmland. So I appreciated him uh, pointing me to this position. And we work an awful lot with those kinds of companies to try and find ways to help them with their products, help sell their products, and uh, export those products abroad. But all told, uh, when you think about what we do with those products, we have, uh, we lead the nation in, in food processing terms of sales, about $180 billion in 2012 uh, was, uh, was related to the food processing. It's number one in the nation. And uh, we also produce quite a bit of ethanol here. So when you go to the gas station, of course, you see that uh, you have a, a about 10% ethanol if, if you buy the regular gas. And there's a lot of people who used to say, well, we should only use our, our uh, grain for feed and uh, animal uh, foods, etc. But what's happened is that not only do we find that we're producing enough to uh, help produce ethanol in a, in, a, uh, in a big way, we also, because of the research that's going on in our universities, like SIU Edwardsville, uh, they have the National Corn to Ethanol uh, Research Center there, University of Illinois, uh, we, we're finding that there are a number of products like dry distiller grains that are byproducts that also can be used for additives. So they produce the fuel and they have byproducts and it's uh, being used to help feed cattle and we're exporting a lot of that. We're, we're selling, uh, last year I think it was $1.8 billion worth of those dry distiller grains. Uh, so 
you know, the research and the productivity that's happening in agriculture are huge, and it's, it's one of the things that is a good news story in Illinois. We probably don't always get the full picture of it. We hear all these things, especially in election year, about, you know, how awful things are, but it's a great news story, and, and it's one of the reasons that food and agriculture are our number one industry in Illinois. So it's, uh, it's a good news story all the way around, and, and then, so as I mentioned, we uh, work awfully hard on exporting. <coughs> The food that's produced here and, and the products that are produced here and of course a major means of that are, is the river system here uh, and you're right here at the confluence of a couple of rivers and uh, without those rivers Illinois would not be nearly the exporter or have the uh, prosperity in agriculture that it has uh, one of the things that happened during the drought a couple of years ago was when, when it went dry is that we had opportunities to work with the Corps of Engineers and it, you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, think that the Department of Agriculture would be working very closely on those kind of issues, but we were working really close with our, with our Department of Transportation. Governor Quinn called the White House. Uh, Senator Durbin called the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and uh, the Coast Guard, and, and they got together and they actually did some work while that river was low that removed some uh, pinnacle rocks and so on that impeded barges from transporting corn, soybeans uh, to other countries and bringing our inputs like fertilizer in and took advantage of those times to get in there and do some incredible work that is going to continue to help uh, our uh, economy and our, our uh, transportation system uh, for years to come. So uh, those are the kind of things you get involved in. Go to Washington, lobby for you know federal support to do those kind of things to help our river system. And uh, it, it's you're really here in a, in a, in a wonderful area. I had a chance to uh, be at the National Great Rivers uh, Center there and, uh, down the road here. Uh, last week, we hosted a Midwestern meeting of agriculture, environmental leaders, conservation leaders, US EPA, uh, and uh, we talked about ways that we could reduce our nutrient runoff. It was an ideal setting for a meeting, so, and hopefully good for your tourism. I do have an Alton pen, oh, and I got a nice packet, and, and of course, we come here to, to watch the Eagles from time to time, and you know, it's just a wonderful place here. I'd love to come, love to come here, and I appreciate being here. But it, it was a national um, meeting uh, hosted by uh, the, the Great River Center and uh, the Illinois Department of Agriculture. But we, so the river system also carries nutrients from the farm fields, and they sometimes like to think that we're the greatest cause of the dead zone down in the Gulf of Mexico. There's this area called the dead zone where it's hard to grow, uh, or where where uh, aquatic life doesn't fare so well because of the, the oxygen that uh, comes down the river. And uh, so it's something that we we talk about here, and we're we've got a one of the things we're trying to do is avoid costly regulations from the U.S. EPA by uh, working with agriculture <coughs> and cities to have. Uh, a voluntary program to reduce nitrates and phosphates into the water systems. So, you know, those are among the things we work on as well. Things I never really thought I'd be working on uh, as a, a director of agriculture, but something that's really vitally important to our environment. So farmers are pitching in though, and, and we have studies and the fertilizer industry is working on ways that we can keep fertilizer in the crops, and, and that's really significant and it's, it's good for our environment. But back to our products, um, we, we also, Try and promote products here domestically. So, in addition to uh, the exports that uh, we sell, we also try and help our Illinois companies sell uh, nationally and internationally at uh, food shows that we sponsor uh, on their behalf, and, and they deal with national and international buyers. We also have this local program. It's called the the, the Illinois Product Program, and one of the things we uh, try and encourage and, and talk about is for people, for families to take the Buy Illinois Challenge. And so I, I've got a, a magazine up here and I'd like to pass these out to you, but on uh, page 35 it talks a little bit about this uh, Buy Illinois Challenge. And uh, it simply goes like this, if, if everybody in Illinois, every family in Illinois would commit to buying $10 worth of their groceries uh, from, Illinois, uh, from an Illinois uh, source, it could be Illinois wine, it could be barbecue sauce, it could be you know, anything produced in Illinois, uh, that $10 a week would ripple through the economy to the tune of $2.4 billion, 
it helps keep our, our money uh, local and uh, keeps our money in Illinois and supports our businesses. It's good for the economy. So we also have domestic uh, programs as well. So one, a couple other facts about Illinois agriculture is that we are uh, hopefully going to be, will definitely be one or two in soybeans and corn this year, one or two, hopefully <coughs> number one. Uh, we're number four in pork production uh, in the nation uh, throughout, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the pork that's produced here and, and uh, sold here. But, you know, here, uh, tomorrow's Halloween, and this is uh, probably a significant statistic, we're number one in pumpkin production. I don't know if you realize that, but we're number one in pumpkins in the nation. And uh, we're also number one in horseradish, too, so you know, next time you have a corned beef or a prime rib, think about uh, using some more horseradish because that's good for our economy as well. But all of our, um, all told, uh, yeah. Illinois uh, agriculture is considered to be our number one industry. And it's really a, a big, uh, big asset for our area. Uh, and and as, far our age, as far as our agency goes, uh, a lot of times we hear a lot about fat and how you need to cut bureaucracy and so on. And I can tell you in our agency, uh, it was uh, about eight years ago. We had one. We had about 600 employees. We're down to about 340 right now. Uh, so our, our uh, and I think back 20 some years ago, they had over 800 employees. So our agency is uh, doing the same things with fewer dollars. On top of that, I have to uh, share with you that uh, we have a new mandate. Uh, it's um, called the medical marijuana program, where we're overseeing the new program and the cultivation centers. There will be 21 cultivation centers throughout uh, the state, one in each police district, and, and our responsibility is to oversee those and give out the permits. It's a competitive uh, basis. Uh, and so we've had 186 applicants for that, and we're going to have to score those and, and do it in a way where we, we don't know who the applicants are. It's sort of a blind scoring, but it's going to be who are the best applicants for those uh, areas. And, I don't know if you followed this very, very much, but uh, other states have legalized it, but I don't think any are going to have near the quality control, near the type of program that we'll have where you'll know what is actually in the, the product. And it's not necessarily something that's always going to be smoked, for example. It's going to be in foods and it'll be labeled, you know, the, the uh, concentration and so on. And then there will be 60 dispensaries. So any dispensary that's located throughout the state will have to buy it or get their supply from one of our cultivation centers. Uh, so contrast that to California. If you go to California and you decide uh, that uh, you need for, for some illness or uh, you know, to buy some medical marijuana, you, know, you get a, a prescription. And uh, uh, quite candidly, the, the restrictions are not near as tight. But you don't know what you're really getting in that product. Whereas here in Illinois, you know, you'll know that. And so quality control is going to be big. and and uh, it's a pilot program, and, but I mention that because we've been given the mandate, but not necessarily the resources. So our people have been working really hard on that and come up with these rules, and uh, we're hoping that the legislature gives us some resources because uh, with those licenses came an application fee that hopefully will fund that product, uh, that program. So it's, it's a big deal. Um, and I also have to say, having been a former <coughs> state representative, I've had the honor and privilege of serving with your local elected officials, uh, Senator Bill Hain and, and uh, Representative Dan Beiser. In fact, Dan and I were seatmates <coughs> in the house, and uh, just a really good guy. And you're lucky to have uh, folks like that looking out for you there in Springfield. Dan, uh, I told him I was going to be here. He said that he had a, his knee replaced about 10 years ago, so he's kind of um, at home recuperating and uh, uh, asked me to send you uh, his regards. but. Uh, he's a good guy and, and uh, one of the guys who supports our budget when we go to Springfield. And, and that's one of the things that I'm, I'm also very proud about. So I've been in this position for, uh, it'll be my, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll be starting my third year uh, in February. And uh, with uh, the, the budgets, through the budget cycles, I came in at the end of one. But, you know, we had sort of this feeling in our agency that, oh, we're just going to get cut again. They've been cut for 10 years in a row, cut, cut, cut. 
And so we went in with the idea that we needed to start rebuilding. We need, you know, if we're the number one economic, if, if agriculture is number one economic engine for the state of Illinois, food and agriculture, then you know you, you can't keep short changing this industry. So I went to Governor Quinn and asked him to uh, think about rebuilding our agency in certain areas, helping us improve our marketing programs, <coughs> helping us with our soil and water conservation programs, helping us with animal health and welfare. For example, we used to have, uh, we're responsible for regulating pet stores and, and the health of uh, farm animals. We have, um, we have six inspectors statewide, one for the <coughs> entire uh, city of Chicago. We used to have double that. So, you know, we're trying to find ways to rebuild that. And at a time when people call in an awful lot, and need, uh, we feel like they need our services to make sure that uh, those uh, locations that raise animals or sell animals are uh, doing an appropriate job. So uh, I'm real proud to say that uh, we've been rebuilding our budget. In the last couple of years, we've seen modest increases. Our budget's about $100 million. Um, once upon a time, it was a lot more than that. But uh, we're, we're doing, I, I just want to say, on behalf of the people who work for our agency, they, they do an incredible job. They really care about their jobs. And uh, it's, it's one area of government that you don't hear a whole lot of criticism. And uh, people pitch in. It's a great place to go to work. People come in and do a great job. And so uh, I'm just honored to be uh, part of an agency where uh, we have a positive outlook and we're contributing in a lot of different ways to our, our economy, probably more ways than a lot of people think about. So.